Hi everyone, my name is Courtney Waring and I'm the Director of Education at the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. Joining me from his studio in Southern Maine is Ryan T. Higgins, the award-winning author and illustrator of the Mother Bruce series, We Don't Eat Our Classmates, and most recently, What About Worms, the seventh title in the Elephant and Piggy Leg Reading series with Mo Willems. Ryan is also one of the 21 artists participating in the Carl's first online exhibition, Art in Place, Social Distancing in the Studio. Thanks for taking the time to chat, Ryan. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Now, all of us at the Carl love talking to authors and illustrators to learn more about their process for writing stories and creating art and just to learn more about what inspires them. So we've got a couple questions for you, maybe Thank more you. than a couple. And then we're going to show a really great art project that you've created at home with your family. Right. Yeah. So our first question, and it is a pretty big question. How do you come up with ideas for your books? So I have two answers for this question. One is the silly one that I give to children. And then one is the more realistic one that I give to children, although they're both pretty silly. The first one is I tell kids when they ask me, I say, um, there's this mountain in my town called Mount Agameticus. And every third Tuesday of the month, I, I drive up to it and I hike up to the top of the mountain. And on top of the mountain, I meet an elephant whose name is Izzy. And Izzy has a little bucket full of ideas. And I take one of those bucket, I mean, take one of the ideas out of the bucket, I bring it home, I read it. And that's how I come up with ideas for books. And when I tell that to kids, they look at me and they're like, that's not true. That's and so then I will tell them that there really is no magic answer to that. There's not like a specific thing that I do. It would be cool if there was, but yeah. really all I do is I just wait for an idea to pop in my head. And I have found out though, uh, that the more books I read, the more ideas I come up with and the more fun, active things I do outside. Also the more ideas I come up with. So I do a lot of, um, hiking and biking and running and just playing outside with my kids and for some reason all that movement and stuff gets the creative juices flowing and if I've been reading a lot of books usually those things will go together and ideas will pop in my head and I always carry a little notebook or nowadays it's just my phone uh, and I will I will record or write down my ideas uh, usually they're terrible ideas so I might have oh, like 20 or 30 pretty bad ideas, and then one that's okay. And then I'll take that okay idea and I'll share it with my editor, and then she and I will figure out how to make it into a good idea. And that's sort of like how I come up with it. That's how you get started. Right. And when, you, when you're ready to start illustrating for your book, what is your favorite material or tool that you work with? Can you share it with us? Yeah, so when I am doing my artwork, I actually do all of it on my computer. So I have my favorite tool with me right here. This is my Wacom drawing tablet. I don't know if you can, can you see it okay? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so I'm actually working on, ooh, this might be top secret. I, know. I, I can't see that out, but anyways, I'm working on a new Bruce book and there's, a, there's some scenes happening right here. I thought I saw um, Bruce. So I use this little digital pen here, and then when I draw on it, it just kind of shows up like that. It's a lot like drawing on paper, except that I have this handy dandy edit undo button. And so this is my favorite tool. I, I have a lot of friends who still use paper and ink and paint, and um, that is uh, you know, the traditional way to do it, and it's a very excellent way to do it. Um, it's not the way that works best for me, because I, um, I find that when I can be very experimental, mm -hmm. uh, I tend to be a little freer with my line drawings and the colors I might choose. And so for me, it works well because I can experiment with something. If I don't like it, I can get rid of it right away and just keep moving with the drawing. It's like a, a magic eraser. And I imagine that can come in really handy, especially as you're you know, talking to your art editor about the images too, if there's any slight changes or edits that they suggest. Yeah, it's very easy for, here, actually, you know what? I'll show you another example. So let's say I send this to my editor or my art director, and they say, we really like Bruce in this clown costume, but we were wondering if you could move him. Okay, so let's say I want to move somebody around, like, like Bruce right down here. I'm going to zoom it in so you can see. 
So let's let's say in this bicycle position, let's say his back isn't in the right place. It needs to move back a little bit. We can, yeah. we can move it way back here. You know, so you can, I have different parts of the drawing on different layers. And so I'm able to change things. I could shrink his part of him if I wanted to. So I can make him really tiny and scrunched up like that. Or, you know, that doesn't look very good. So I can make it back to the regular size. So one of the handy things of using a computer for artwork is when it comes to edits, um, I can just, I can change things really quickly. I don't have to redraw the whole thing. Okay. That's nice. And as you're working on books, and sometimes I imagine you might be working on different projects at the same time, what do you mm -hmm. do when you just need a brain break from it all? Oh, actually, it's in the very background of my, of my studio. You can see it. See that couch back there? I, uh, I like to take naps on that couch. <laughs> um, a lot of times, though, uh, what, I, uh, what I'll do if I need a brain break is I will take, well, actually, on the couch there, the dog, and there's another one on the floor. I don't know if you can I see, see her. Those are, my, those are my co-workers. Um, they usually help me with my brain breaks. I take them on walks or on runs. What are their names? Well, the one on the couch, that's Sylvia. You might notice that she's wearing a blue thing around her neck. That's an e-collar. She has a cut on her ear and she keeps scratching at it. So yeah. out of there. And then the one on the ground that you can see a little bit of, that's Sonora. Oh, that's nice. And I met, so I met Sylvia and Sonora on one of your um, great uh, uh, studio videos, uh, Studio Time with Ryan T. Higgins that you've got on YouTube. Um, you show us the studio where you are right now. Um, what do you have? Do you have anything in your studio that you keep in there that inspires you? Yes, I do. It's kind of hard to show you all of it. Um, so I took a few of them off the wall and off my shelf. Uh, from inspiration, I have a lot of things made by my children. So my kids are all, they're always making little crafts and stuff. This is just a piece of bark that they found. And then my daughter drew some pictures and stuck it in there and put a picture of herself. Um, it's like a one of them made like this little Bruce head for me. I've got all these little notes from from them. And, and like my daughter loves to draw Bruce. So she draws him over and over again. She actually, when I'm doing um, book signings, like book plates or something, yeah. uh, she'll sit down next to me with a stack of paper and she'll be drawing Bruce on her <laughs> stack of paper while I am signing and drawing in book plates. And then here's one from my son. So yeah. Um, again, it's kind of hard to show you. I can try to angle my computer a little bit, but like, Great. so my, my, oh, yeah. my walls have kids artwork all over them. So that's where I draw most, most of my inspiration is just, you know, I make books for kids and, you know, my kids are my kids. And so <laughs> I usually think about how they're going to like the book when I'm making it. I love it. You've got a whole Higgins family gallery in your studio. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I also have there. Sorry. I also have this guy. This is not made by my children. I have two little statues that sit above my desk. There's this guy. He, he, uh, he's this, I think he's called the adventure bear. Is that what he is? Yeah. And it's from this wood carver, the little wood shop. I, I, I follow this, uh, this guy on Twitter, and he sells these really cool statues. So, yeah, he has a little hat. It's pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, and then I had this little this little carving of a fox that I my grandfather got me when I was six. Oh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I mean, I've got a lot of little things like that hanging around. Um, yeah, but. So I, I, sometimes when I visit my friends' studios, my other illustrator friends, they have very organized um, wall space and like alphabetized shelves and they'll have, uh, you know, things that are very organized and whatnot. Mine's very eclectic. Very organic. <laughs> yeah, and it changes from time to time. I used to have, you can't see it up there now because it's not there, but I have a shelf with my own books. Um, that, I'm, I'm not quite that egocentric, but... Um, I, I have those up there uh, for the studio time videos. Usually I have um, a bunch of uh, sciencey things up there. So I'm really big into biology and um, animal science and stuff like that. I went to school for ecology. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I, 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 so usually up there I have a bunch of different animal skulls. So uh, that are from like, you know, 
natural depth things or their uh, replicas or stuff like that. But so a lot of times I'll have, you know, stuff up there um, that isn't necessarily just my books, but they're not there now, but I do draw inspiration for them. From those as well. Yeah. yeah. So you were in your studio as you were working on What About Worms, as you were working on your newest book, was there anything um, that surprised you or uh, that you learned as you were making it? Yeah, so um, while I was working on this book, uh, I worked with Mo and I learned a lot from working with Mo. It was kind of like taking a master's course in picture bookmaking. It was like a dream come true for me. Um, I learned a lot about lots of stuff, uh, like pacing, page turns, you know, things I hadn't thought about before. One of the things that I discovered is it is difficult to write a book without using contractions. <laughs> so that's the thing for early readers. You right. don't want to have a lot of contractions because when you throw commas in there, it's hard for kids to read, you know, I've, I'll, you know, is right. stuff like that. So, um, one of the things I took away from it was uh, was just figuring out how to write you without using contractions. And I, since then, I have found myself writing manuscripts for Bruce books, which usually have quite a bit of contractions. I find myself writing without them, and I have to go back in and put them put, put them, them back, back in. in. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a nice skill to have. You know, however, if you talk without contractions, it sounds different. Different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh, before we started recording, uh, we were talking about the, the books that were on your shelves. Um, can you yeah. share with us a picture book that you really love? It could be a picture book from your childhood. It could be one that's more recent. Yeah. So uh, the one that came to mind uh, right away was, was this here. Richard Scarry's Cars and Trucks and Things That Go. I'm on a big Richard scary kick right now. My, my uh, son and daughter are really into looking at all the things going on. I mean, everyone knows Richard Scary. there, but you know, I mean, there's just so much going on in these books. And um, I, I just find it so fascinating to look at. There's very simple stories. There's, you know, the stories are just super simple, but the pictures are so complicated and fun to look at. You can spend hours and hours on these books. Um, and they were a really big part of my childhood. And I, I really, I didn't forget about Richard Scarry, but I didn't really give too much thought to Richard Scarry until my oldest son, he's eight now, but until he turned like four. And then I dug through my old, my old books. This one actually was mine. Um, this was my copy of Cars and Trucks and Things That Go when I was a kid. And it's been really neat to share, you know, those books with, with my kids. I, I I have the same thing. I've I found all of my childhood books, and I've just realized I can't get rid of them. And my yeah. my older sister is much better at you know donating <laughs> books that she doesn't need anymore. And so I find that I'm now taking hers her childhood books as well because I have my own memories from them. I just can't yeah. let them go. It's so fascinating to to um to revisit the books that kind of shaped you as a as a child and 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 as you are as an adult. Yeah, they, so I, I feel the same way. I can't get rid of any books that I had when I was a kid. Um, same thing with action figures. <laughs> <laughs> I have all my original Ninja Turtles and He-Man action figures. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, everything else, like, you know, old trucks and stuff I got rid of. But those books and action figures, I had to keep. <laughs> Now, we do have a couple more questions from our friends on social media. Um, one is from Umu, who is just about to finish kindergarten. And Umu asks, how'd you become an author, Ryan? Oh, well, um, my answer to that is, is it Umu? So, Umu yes. Umu. So Umu, my question to you is, have you, have you ever made up a story? And if the answer is yes, which I'm sure you have made up a story, that means you are already an author. If you've ever drawn a picture, you're also already an illustrator. The difference between me and Umu and other kids out there, well, there's a couple of differences. One, I'm bigger than them. And two, um, I'm an author and illustrator for my job, which means people buy my books because they're in stores. And the reason they're in stores is that I have a publisher who takes the stories I write and the drawings I draw and they put them together into a book. Uh, it's kind of a complicated process on how to get a publisher, but basically the thing to do for kids is just keep making art. 
and keep writing stories. And if you practice and you do that enough, um, then someday you will make art and you will make stories that will be uh, something that publishers will want to buy from you and put into books and then you will be a professional author and illustrator too. The actual answer is very long and boring, but, but the, the short of it is that. So we're all, we're all writers and artists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we have another question from Evan. This seems very specific to your new book, What About Worms? Mm -hmm. Evan asks, are worms good for gardens? Worms are great for gardens. I believe without worms, gardens probably don't grow very well. The, the things that worms do is they eat uh, bits of uh, like rotting wood and rotting leaves and rotting plant material. So they, they eat that. And then it, they, it, that all goes through their very long digestive system. And out the other end comes fertilizer. And that fertilizer is what feeds gardens. Garden. So, and everything, all plants, you know, I mean, grass and even weeds and all those things that, that grow out there, they, they grow in part because worms are living in the soil doing their jobs. Thank you. Now, last question. This is from Jenny. Jenny wants to know if you could read a favorite book besides your own, aloud to children, what book would it be? I love, excuse me just a moment, I'm going to roll out of the frame. I am a very big fan of Calvin and Hobbes. Wow. Um, you know, I, I don't have, I have all of the Calvin and Hobbes books there in my house, but in my studio, I have this complete works of Calvin and Hobbes. That's amazing. So I love sitting down with um, my son and daughter. We have three kids. One of them is only 18 months old. So his attention span isn't quite ready for Calvin and Hobbes yet. But my six-year-old daughter and my eight-year-old son are super into Calvin and Hobbes. And so a lot of nights we will sit and read Calvin and Hobbes before we go to bed. That's, and so that's one of my favorites to, to read to kids. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thanks for answering our questions. And um, now we're gonna we're gonna share an art project. You and your kids created an art project inspired by What About Worms, and I think our viewers are really gonna enjoy um, finding their own creative inspiration at home uh, by taking a look at it. So let's let's take a look and see. Hello, friends of the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. I'm here with my kids. Griffin and Cece, and behind the camera is Harry, and we have decided to celebrate my new book, What About Worms, an elephant and piggy-like reading book. We were going to show you how to make your very own worm. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right. These are the things you're going to need. A piece of colored paper. It can be white, too, if you would like, but... Colored paper will be a little more interesting. Hold up your colored paper. All right, cool. All right, you will need that. You will need three pencils. One of them has to be sharpened. The other two don't have to be, but they can be. You will need a pair of scissors. If an adult is helping you, they can use one of these ones with the pointy end. If you are a kid, probably still with an adult's help, you can use one of these rounded ones. You also need some tape. To get started, we're going to take our pieces of paper and hold them this way. All right, we're going to cut a section of paper that is the whole length of it and is about an inch long. Are you ready? So we're going to try to cut it nice and straight. Right about like this. And if you need help cutting, Make sure you ask a grown-up. All right. So I've got this one here. Oh, now worms come in all shapes and sizes. We've got a skinny one here. We've got a little bit wider one here. We've got one in the middle here. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to round this off so it's worm-shaped. So what you can do, you can do a couple things. If you have, if you have trouble just cutting and you want to go by something, what I would say is you take your pencil and you just draw a half circle on the end there. See? Like this. And then you can just cut along that line. Or if you're an expert cutter, 
you can just eyeball it. All right, there we go. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the back side too. Oh, you already did it, you're speedy. Yeah. All right. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like a hot dog. Are you ready? All right, we go on to the next step. I think Griffin's making a bunch of worms. So the next step is, we're going to draw on this worm cutout a bunch of little lines. Those will be the segments of the worm. So I'm gonna start off with the worm's head, and then I'm gonna draw lots of little segments. So here, I'll show you. You can just see, I'm just drawing down the worm like that. There we go. And then I want you to pick one end that's gonna be its head. I'm gonna say this end and draw a little smiley face on there, facing this way, all right? So the smiley face is gonna be right here. So it's gonna go a little dot, a little dot, and a smiley face. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker so you can see. So put a little Yay. dot right there, a little dot right there, and a smiley face. Let's see here. Not sure you can see it. Right there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make this into a bookworm. So I'm gonna give it some nice reading glasses. I'm gonna draw some circles around those eyes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Oh, very nice. Can you shut up the camera? And now comes the bit where we turn it into a 3D worm. Are you guys ready? Yeah? Okay. So we're gonna make a bunch of little folds in this. First, we're gonna start with the head and we're gonna take it in that very top, that first line right there, we're gonna fold it on that first line. We're gonna fold it up like this, all right? And then we're gonna take somewhere near that next line that we drew and we're gonna fold it the other way. So you've got something that looks like this, see? Uh -huh. it should look kinda like that, see? And then we're gonna do the next line and we're gonna fold it up like that. And then we're gonna take the next one and we're gonna fold it down like that. <laughs> and we're gonna keep doing that for quite a while. It depends on how many segments you drew. I drew quite a lot, so this might take me a little while. You can see Harry helping with the camera work back there. So as you move along, it should start to look like an accordion, kind of. See how it kind of opens up and closes like this? How's yours doing? Oh, excellent. How's yours doing, Cece? Good? All right. So I'm going to keep doing that. Okay, fold, 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 and then maybe one more fold at the end. All right. Now, at this point in the process, it should look kind of like this. And it may not go right back together when you pull it out and push it back in. It may go like this. Daddy, is it supposed to go like this or like this? Like that, just the way you have it. All right, so now comes the fun part. We get to use the tape. So now you're going to take any of your two pencils. Hold them up, Cece. Let's see them. Driven, hold up your pencils. Okay, good. You're going to take the pointy sides, and you're going to set them somewhere near the head and the tail of your worm. <laughs> Although it's kind of hard to tell the tops from the bottom sometimes. And you're going to take a piece of tape, and you are going to stick it on one of the pencils, like that. And then you are going to tape it to one end of the worm. I did the head first. All right, so you get a little wiggly worm right there like that. It's not done yet. All right, I'm gonna get you some more tape. Cece, do you need more tape? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yes, please. There you go, madam. Thank you. All right. Do you need some more tape, bud? Yeah. All right. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, and then I'm gonna do one more piece of tape. Right on here. See, same as before, just like that. I'm gonna stick it on the tail of the worm. 
And then we should have a worm puppet. Let's see how it works. All right, so there's my little worm. Here guys, let's clear the tables. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was a little bit early. There you go, bud. You ready? Should we do a little worm puppet show? Ready? Here we go. Now you can just make them inch along. Here, pull them off a little bit. Get them nice and pre-ready. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Griff, do you want to get in the worm parade? All right. Okay, cool. Let's all start a worm parade. Okay, let's start over here. Harry, do you want a worm? Harry, come over here. You want a worm? Here, Griffin made you a worm. All right, let's do a worm parade. Ready? Well, is there a worm song? Oh, I know. Why don't they sing worms, 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 worms? Here we go. Worms, 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 worms. And there you go. Some homemade worms. I hope you guys enjoy making worms at home. And also, I hope that you enjoy my book. It's the seventh in the Elephant and Piggy Like Reading series. I got to work with my friend Mo on it. It was a blast. And I hope to see you at the Eric Todd Museum of Picture Book Art. Bye, everybody. Great, Ryan. Thank you so much for taking time to talk about your work and what inspires you for our viewers. If you'd like to purchase Ryan's newest book, What About Worms, please visit the Carl Bookshop at shop.carlmuseum.org. And you'll also receive an autograph book plate. Thanks, everyone. And thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you very much. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And, and I hope to see you in the uh, as soon as possible future at the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art. Oh, we look forward to seeing all of you back at the Carl, too. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, everyone. Happy reading. Bye.